first of all, let me say this is a great opportunity uh, for me, not only to talk to you, but to be able to reach out to the people of Guyana. We've tried to follow Guyana in the past couple of, in the past decade, and there's been so much satisfaction with the progress you've made that the uh, resources are now being used to, to be able to address the needs of the people, to put Guyana on a sound democratic path. And this is something that's so pleasing to everybody all over the world. These elections have also been followed by so many groups and many of them you've already mentioned. My own uh, group in which I'm a participant, the elders, you know, haven't observed the results, haven't been satisfied that the will of the people is that we should prevail and that uh, the vote count, the vote recount, you know, has been uh, endorsed by so many people, the regional leaders uh, in, in the Caribbean, as well as uh, uh, others from the United States. And all of that has brought hope. And now we're facing a situation that is so, it has happened before. And I want to tell you, I have been a part and a victim of a situation in which elections were held, the will of the people were very clear in the counting of the votes, and those results were not allowed to be announced and for democracy to proceed in accordance with the will of the people. The effect of it is so devastating because people demand the right of choice. Governments and authorities need to work with them and when that will is expressed, to give them the opportunity to have that right of choice exercise in governing the state. And when that doesn't happen, you cannot control events that would follow. Because those who, those who conclude that their vote has not been respected will show resistance. Sometimes we have to and show that that resistance is peaceful, but no one has control over what happens. Once protests against not being able to see my vote carried out, then transcends into dissatisfaction, it transcends into disillusionment, it transcends into people feel my future has been taken away from me, because my vote has not been allowed, and you're dealing here with the majority of the people, it's a recipe for disaster. And what can happen is that if that protest is not properly managed by the state, by the authorities, and it gets out of hand because there's counteraction to repress the, the, the protest, to contain it, then it ends up on the streets that could easily lead to serious conflict. And conflict has serious consequences. Our country, facing a similar, similar situation, found that the aftermath of protest and repression was the destruction of our country. And for many years, we found ourselves embroiled in a continuing conflict, a continuing source of dissatisfaction and confusion and rebellion in the society. All the institutions that should have been functioning to promote the development of the people went into a state of non-functioning, non-functionality, things stopped. And that also invites external groups to come in 
to penetrate the workings of government and to take over. And then the state loses total control of the management of its resources, of its responses to its people. And we had two decades of conflict with damaging results in infrastructure, in institution, in the will of our people, in all of our systems. It is a, it's a situation that anyone who loves their country, anyone who's interested in the development of their country must do all they can to avoid uh, this tensions, disagreements in elections being concluding in conflict, in damages, in, in destruction. My appeal to the authorities who manage the affairs of Guyana, my appeal to the people of Guyana, please see your country and the progress it has made in these last few years and protect it. Please do not see this situation digress into violence, into destruction, because once you get on that path, it's so difficult to control it. And you never know what the final consequences will be. You will cause your own people to suffer. You will cause lasting effects to people's morale, to people's will, to be able to serve their country, to your supporters on the outside who have done everything to get you to this place of progress that will finally see you as being self-destructive, being able to destroy your own progress. And you find that your partnership begins to be limited, begins to withdraw from the level of assistance and cooperation that they gave. And that in itself will have a paralyzing effect on all that you've been doing to promote it. So, um, Mr. Ali, I want to say that those of you who are continuing to call for calm, to call for peace, to call for rationality and consideration in these matters are to be commended. I know it's a difficult thing, but I will ask you and those in the American Chamber of Commerce to continue this effort. And those of us on the outside that have been promoting all the efforts that Guyana has been making must also continue our work, continue to send these messages of hope, these messages to the Guyanese people, to the Guyanese people, Guyanese people, to please do not destroy the progress that your country has made so much with your hard work and dedication and patriotism. You've given so much to your country in the last decade to bring it to where it is. This is the time to consolidate the progress, to see democracy that you have earned on a firmer footing. And that means reconciliation. That means cooperation. That means getting together and looking at this situation and see Guyana as bigger than any particular party, any particular group, any particular person. That is our call to you, a call for the preservation 
of your future by yourselves. No one can do it for you. Everyone can promote whatever you've done to achieve this level of democracy, but only Guyanese people can protect it and maintain it. And so we all not only pray for you, we continue to look to you for you to rise above this particular pause in your development effort, this particular obstruction to all that you have achieved in the past year. Please rise to the price, to the cause of upliftment of your own country, the preservation of peace and stability and solidarity that your country deserves. Mr.